Welcome back. You're listening to Houston Real Estate Radio. I'm your host, Shanna Register, and every week we bring you news and information you can use on your next real estate transaction. If you miss any of today's show, you can go to HoustonRealEstateRadio.com and see videos of all four segments of the show. Today on this segment, we are talking with Dahlia Brown. She is the Texas Association of Realtors field rep here in the Houston market. Um, They have many field reps. She is one local, so she's coming to the studio to talk to me today. We're going to be talking about the code of ethics and what makes realtors a little different than just an average real estate agent, because there is a difference. And as a consumer, you're going to want to know what the difference is. You can also find more information over at our Facebook page at Houston Real Estate Radio on Facebook. We put some videos out over there. Lots of information coming to you. Dahlia earned her bachelor's degree in journalism from Texas A&M. We're not going to hold that against her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. She's uh, she's also gotten her uh, her master's degree um, from Mayborn uh, Institute of Journalism. She is a legislative liaison. Um, she helps with a lot of governmental affairs issues, kind of educating our realtors um, through the Texas Association of Realtors. In January of 06, she joined TAR as a field rep. Um, and, uh, you know, she really helps realtors. But we're going to be talking about things uh, that have to do with realtors, but also with consumers, because I want to make sure that consumers understand the code of ethics that realtors fall under. Because I have consumers say things to me like, Oh, well, you know, how do I know you have multiple offers? You could be lying to me. And, um, you know, just things that, that that tell me clearly that consumers don't realize a lot of times that we do fall under a strict code of ethics. And if we as realtors don't follow this code of ethics, re- other realtors turn us in. So, you know, it is a strict code um, that we follow. And that is what separates us from other real estate agents who aren't realtors. So when we, um, when we join our local Houston Association, of Realtors. We're also joining our Texas Association of Realtors and our National Association of Realtors. So Dahlia, thanks for coming on the show today. Oh, thank you. I'm glad to be here. So we have a lot to talk about. Let's start though. I know you, you've got, I know we got to get your legislative stuff in. Oh yeah. So let's start first and talk about Proposition 1. You know, we have done uh, a lot of shows uh, with the mayoral candidates for Houston because we really wanted to educate consumers on who they're going to be voting for because this is a big vote coming up. And so um, Proposition 1 is going to be on that ballot come November. So we want to talk about that as well. Oh, yes. Proposition 1 was uh, really the work of a lot of help from the Texas Association of Realtors in the legislative session. And with this very long and very poorly, poorly worded constitutional amendment, as, as most constitutional amendments are, for it to have their all of their legalities in, in order, it's very long. And if you read through it, you know, in, unless you have a legal degree, sometimes it's hard to understand. Mm-hmm. But the best thing about Prop 1 is that it is going to increase the homestead exemption in Texas. And every consumer needs to be for that. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> That's absolutely. important. Yes. It hasn't um, changed in over 15 years. So it was this time the legislature said this is going to be money that's going to be pushed down from the state to the local school districts. So the homestead exemption will move from $15,000 to $25,000. And some people have said that's really not that much, but every little bit counts. This is a huge thing. Absolutely. And this is something too that isn't just going to be one time. This will be from now until hopefully they increase it uh, in the future years. And just so that our listeners know, we talked a lot about Proposition 1, what was it, last year when it was about transportation. Right. Um, So want to make it clear that this is a new Proposition 1 that will be on the ballot in November. Right. um, That has to do with um, an increase in the homestead exemption, which you want, which will save, uh, which will save you money on your homestead uh, taxes or on your property taxes. And then also there's a ban on transfer fees fees for real estate. Talk to us about that. This is a really big issue. And, you know, other people in other states are saying, wow, this is a big, big deal because you have to look at states like California, Florida. But I think my perfect example is Philadelphia. The city of Philadelphia, if you sell your home, you will pay a 5% transfer fee. That's a lot. It's a lot of money. And that's not Mm -hmm. money you're rolling into your loan. That's money that you're bringing cash to the table as a seller because that money is going not only to the state, the city, and the county. So for Texas to say, you know what, this is never going to happen at a state or a municipal level. So that's a really big deal. Mm -hmm. Uh, A 
a city couldn't come in and say, we're going to charge a 1% transaction fee and we're going to pay for a road project or um, some kind of education issue. So this is a big deal and it would be constitutionally bound. So it's not going to go away. Well, that's fantastic. I'm glad it's going on the ballot for November. This is uh, November of next year, 20, or no, 2015. Sorry. It'll be this year. <laughs> this year. Yes. So Houston's got a lot on the ballot this this election with not only the mayoral with some city ordinances but also with some several propositions so very important you know we we really want you to vote for your mayor and we also want you to vote proposition one um, which is going to help you out as a homeowner so that's important all right let's move on and talk a little bit about this big bad code of ethics yes so the national association of realtors came out with this code of ethics uh over a hundred years ago right yes a hundred and two and this november will be the hundred and second anniversary of the code of ethics Long, and it keeps evolving yes it keeps getting to you know every year or two there's some little changes to it which is good it keeps Absolutely. evolving and um I, you know i think that the code of ethics is a great thing for realtors to follow because there's no questions no doubts on on what we do um as long as we act in the best interest of our client and follow you know by following the code of ethics um it really makes sure that the consumer is taken care of by their realtor Right. Absolutely. The Code of Ethics was put together as the golden thread that will really create um, some continuity in real estate transactions, whether you are a realtor in Pearland, in the Woodlands, or you're in Okinawa. You know, <laughs> All over the world, if you're right. a realtor with that capital R, then you abide by the Code of Ethics. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it is important. You know, it's interesting because every state has different um, rules for real estate transactions. They have different tests that the realtors take. Take. But there's uh, one part of the test that is that's kind of your your nationwide information, and the code of ethics is nationwide, and I, I like that because it does it binds all of us realtors together. So. Right, you're not just a realtor, you're you're not just a licensee, you are a realtor. You know, so that's a, a I think one of the biggest if you're going to use the a realtor for the largest transaction, you're going to want them to be held mm-hmm. to a higher level. And I think there are some consumers out there who just assume that we are all realtors. I think, though, that as you have more and more brokerages coming online that are your discount brokerages, mm-hmm. they are not requiring their agents to be realtors. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you know, you may be calling a company and getting someone who you think is a realtor who isn't really a realtor. Right. So you have to be sure as a consumer that the person you're getting is really a realtor because there's a difference. Yes, ma'am. All right, Dahlia Brown, she is. Uh, she was talking today about the Realtor Code of Ethics, and we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Thank you. 